जन आलम खाकी टीवी देखने वाले तमाम व्यूवर्स को वेलकम मुझे उम्मीद है आप सब ठीक ठाक होंगे आप जानते हैं कि मैंने एक सीरीज ऑफ डिस्कशन शुरू किया है दुनिया के मुख्तलिफ आम लोग मिडिल क्लास और थिंकर्स को इनवाइट करना शुरू किया है जहाँ जहाँ वो अपनी जिंदगी के बारे में बहुत कुछ हमें बताते हैं आई एम हैप्पी टू शेयर विद यू दैट टूडे आई हैव इनवाइटेड अ वेरी डिस्टिंगुश्ड प्रोफेसर ऑफ एजुकेशन एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर दूशान शमटो ए फैकल्टी मेंबर ग्रेजुएट स्कूल ऑफ एजुकेशन नजर वेव यूनिवर्सिटी आस्ताना रिपब्लिक ऑफ कजाकिस्तान सेंट्रल एशिया Uh, I'm sure you must be hearing lots of things uh, very generally through newspapers, through uh, books, articles, and what have you. Uh, Central Asia, Central Asia uh, is a very buzzword. Lots of people use it frequently. Uh, so today we are privileged uh, to have with us uh, Professor uh, Dr. Dushan. Uh, we happen to study together at the University of Toronto. I did a PhD together. That, that's how we knew each other. But also we worked with the Aga Khan University uh, for some time. That's how we know each other. More than that, uh, we share lots of ideas. We love to have fun. We love to sing. Uh, and uh, Mr. Dushan knows, uh, sorry, Professor Dushan knows uh, quite a bit of uh, Urdu language as well. I'm sure many other languages he knows apart from Kazakh language. So, without uh, much ado, uh, let me invite uh, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Dushan. Welcome, Dushan from Astana. Thank you very much, Dr. Saab. I am How very pleased you to be here. your family. They are fine. They are doing well. Well, <coughs> uh, this uh, uh, difficult time all over the world, but we are striving. We are surviving and uh, keeping the positive mode. Excellent, excellent. Dushan, um, would you like to start introducing yourself first of all? A couple of sentences for our viewers. Uh, though I just said a couple of things. But you can speak some of the things they would like us to know as a professor of education uh, and living in, as you are in the Central Asian uh, country, one of the Central Asian countries, Kazakhstan. Can you give us a sense of scale of what is Central Asia? And then you can focus on Kazakhstan. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I am very pleased to be uh, uh, to, to join you in this, uh, your channel TV and uh, to be able to, to share my ideas. And I hope that uh, the viewers may take something useful from this video. Regarding Central Asia, I come from a neighboring country, Kyrgyzstan or Kyrgyz Republic officially, and I'm currently working in Kazakhstan. So my journey to this stage has been really uh, full of uh, different uh, sometimes challenges, exciting events, meeting so many wonderful people as uh, 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 famous Bengali uh, philosopher Tagore said, there are no strangers in this world. There are good friends whom you have never met. Similarly, I wow. was able to meet wonderful people in my life, including Jania Lamsab, yourself. So Central Asia, I grew up in a small village relatively small village in the family of the farmers. I literally spent a lot of time in my childhood uh, helping my father and mother to grow vegetables, melon, watermelon, potato, uh, whatnot, working in the cotton field. Eventually, then I went to school, <laughs> then I went to university. Then I, then I was accepted to study in Pakistan, Karachi, at the master's level, and then I studied in, in Canada. Uh, the, 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 I returned to Central Asia and then, then currently working in Kazakhstan. Central Asia is a, is a very historically, very uh, valuable place that it, it, it is a cradle kind of a, uh, Central Asia, I would call it, it's a, it's a mix, it's a blend of different cultures. It's between Europe and Asia. And also it's a, it is actually 
Central Asia, where my home, my, my country is on, on, the, on the Silk Road, when, uh, uh, so historically it's well known, and also uh, I think uh, uh, great uh, Muslim philosophers, scholars uh, actually came from Central Asia. It's a very historically, uh, very rich place culturally. There are so many languages, and uh, uh, and I think uh, what what I think is, uh, of course, we don't have access to the sea or we, we don't have access to ocean. But the culture is very diverse, but very beautiful scenery, and I think it's a remarkable place. Daniel Ansap, you need to visit it one day. <laughs> Uh, Dushan, thank you very much. Uh, by the way, I am really privileged to have traveled. You know, mm. from London, I uh, went to um, uh, Bishkek, uh, no, Tashkent, uh, with a group of scholars, flew to Tashkent, and from Tashkent, you know, then we traveled to Tajikistan by road, 18 hours uh, by road. I can uh, never forget that journey, powerful experiences. Um, interestingly enough, on the way in these 18 hours journey, there was not a single place where we could have a cup of tea. Oh. <laughs> to stretch. Uh, now we traveled, uh, there were a couple of, uh, you know, other Western friends as well, scholars, and they, they had terrible problems on the way. They had the stomach problems. And <laughs> we had yeah. Yeah. Really, really yeah, difficult time um, uh, for those kinds of problems, but otherwise, you know, uh, uh, awe inspire in, and uh, inspiring uh, or creating or uh, inspiring, um, you know, scenes on the mountains full of uh, clad, clad with full of uh, snow and, um, you know, um, uh, marvelous uh, tunes of snow. Uh, finally, at midnight, we reached to Tajikistan. So uh, I have been privileged to have okay. a feel of these uh, countries. But let me say something that was marvelous for me was I felt like being in the northern areas of Pakistan. Yeah. We call yeah. it now Gilgit Baltistan, having come from Hunza. For me, the rural area, culturally, I felt like at home, particularly the music, the dances. And the Tajikis were surprised to see me the way I danced <laughs> with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? So that was a marvelous experience. So I have some sense, but our viewers, you know, many of them or most of them might not have any experience of Central Asia. It's Thank a you. fabulous uh, region to be once in life, at least. Okay. Uh, so, Thank you. Yeah. The, the, I, I'm just wondering, uh, as we uh, generally, uh, you know, uh, connect all these Central Asian countries, do you see any any particular thread of culture among all these uh, countries, uh, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and Tajikistan, or they are totally different uh, in their cultures, uh, Dushan? Uh, linguistically, uh, most of these countries are Turkic-speaking sp countries. Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and then Azerbaijan, etc. These are Turkic-speaking countries while Tajikistan is a Persian-speaking country. Uh, but nevertheless, there is a lot of cultural similarity. You can, you can notice it in the musical instruments they play or melody is very like a more or less very similar, but also a lot of food, uh, dress, not identical, but a lot of similarities. And also very cordial relationship with, 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 between these. And, uh, and, I, and this surprisingly, uh, I, was, I was also able to visit the northern areas of Pakistan and the Chitral. I saw a, very, a lot of similarities that you described in terms of food. Even names of the, some of the food are very similar. So I was very surprised. Oh. And, and I think uh, earlier you were mentioning about uh, traveling long distance. And I, I, I enjoy traveling this 16 hour, 18 hour travel uh, through high mountain, very picturesque places. But at times it's very dangerous. You can see it deep down there is a river and it's very dangerous. Sometimes accidents take place, but it's a it's an unforgettable travels. You know what, Dr. Sub? Yes. Sometimes I joke, I joke like this. There are some impatient friends. They are always impatient. They are in a hurry all the time. They ask, <laughs> when can we reach? When can we reach? 
I, I, I joke, we must put this into the car and send them from Osh to Horok, Dushanbe to Horok or Bishkek to Osh. Then they will not be asking questions like Shrek's donkey. When can we reach? Are we there yet? Because you need to just sit in a car, relax, enjoy. <laughs> See, you, you, you are now sensitizing to, to, to be poetical. The poets uh, in many ways have said the joy is not reaching the destination. The joy is in the process, in the journey, right? So the same thing was for me as well. You know, just driving on the way was great pleasure. Reaching Tajikistan was not uh, something uh, new for me. Um, I, I just thoroughly enjoyed. Dushan, I'm wondering, there are lots of things both of us can talk, but we will in, uh, hopefully do more videos later on, uh, focusing on some key interesting dimensions of Central Asia. But now I'm just wondering, we'll, we'll pick up some key threats. Uh, just last a bit about this Central Asian uh, scenario. You know, at one time, uh, Samarkand and Bukhara of Uzbekistan, probably they are in Uzbekistan right now. Yeah, they are in Uzbekistan yeah, under now. Uzbekistan. Uh, so they were, you know, like London and Paris of uh, the classical times. Uh, they were so famous. And, and as I, and a poet has uh, said, uh, probably Sadi or, uh, or uh, somebody else has said something marvelous and saying, uh, you know, the dot of the beauty on your face, I can actually sell, you know, Samarkand and Bukhara to buy that. Yeah. So they were the most precious uh, cities of the time, uh, in classical times. What do you hear today? What is their status? Are they still that uh, famous? Uh, or has that, uh, you know, popularity dwindled? Just one or two sentences about Samarkand and Bukhara that probably lots of audience would know about. Samarkand and Bukhara, they have been historical heritage. It is such a valuable place and it reminds of the great Muslim uh, developed uh, growth uh, of that time. And nowadays, even nowadays, these are the great tourist destination oh. in Uzbekistan. Oh. So many people, if they come to Uzbekistan, if they come to Central Asia, they prefer to visit those places because this is really historical. And, I, and the, when I went to Pakistan, I saw a lot of similar constructions and, the, and I, it, that was not surprising. I, went, I visited Punjab, Lahore. I saw all of them from these uh, Mughal times. And I, it's not surprising because at that time, of course, there were no borders and there were no visas, there were no the, the checks and etc. A lot of architects from Central Asia moved and they were they they were they they were they were they were building similar uh, constructions. Uh, but but I think Samarkand and Bukhara are not the only ones. There are so many other places like in Turkestan. Uh, there there is a there is a mausoleum also in Turkestan in Kazakhstan. But even in Osh, my uh, a hometown, my hometown, I can say it's my hometown, it's 15 kilometers from my village. We have a Tahti Sulaiman or the, the mountain of Solomon, Sulaiman. Uh, and they, there are different uh, versions with, about the origin, but it's a really holy place. Many people who, uh, who come to watch, they try to climb the mountain. It's in the middle of the center. Uh, by the way, one of the prime ministers of Pakistan, Benazir Bhutto, when she was a prime minister, she also visited and climbed that mountain. It's really, it's a very remarkable story oh. about it. So I think uh, uh, Central Asia uh, re is renowned for those uh, cultural places. And, uh, and uh, I think, uh, of course, tourism is, is developed, but it would be even better if we improve service so that if we, if we can, um, do better advertisement, many tourists could come to Central Asia. Right, right. Thank you very much, Dushan. Uh, we will continue to explore uh, these historically very important cultural, uh, you know, icons uh, as we move forward. Uh, uh, we, I would like to uh, uh, come to more uh, uh, focused area of this uh, whole uh, notion of flight in Central Asia. What do you think is the notion of life in Central Asia. 
it's difficult to generalize. Uh, I'm aware of it. But generally, how is life seen in Central Asia, your own experience of what is life? I know there's a quite a liberal environment there. Life is uh, you know, observed through different ways, enjoyed through different ways. But one or two sentences, how do you think people see life in Central Asia? Uh, as you rightly said, it's tif- difficult to generalize, but nevertheless, let me, let me share key, key points that my, from my observation. One of them is that Central Asians are deeply attached to the places where they are born, to the land. Land. It can be represented in the poetry, in the songs. They often, they long for the places where they are born if they are not at home. They really have so kind of a special attachment to the land they are born. That's, in, that's mm-hmm. number one. Number two, I think a lot of cent- Central Asia is also kind of a symbiosis, And they, we have plurality of the views. We have a group of people who think that in ancient times we were the great people and the, There is a nostalgia about it, and then we need to rebuild that greatness again. But also, there are others who are saying, no, I think that we need to really pay attention to education, technology, science. We need to really integrate, etc. (laughs) Or there are other people who think that, well, we uh, we were the descendants of the great people, so we can. I think this is a mixture of it in Central Asia. But what makes me really happy that there are a lot of people also what, what uh, uh, Anthony Appiah would call, and I think Sarforos, my friend Sarforos, our friend Sarforos also likes to quote, there are people who are, who are rooted cosmopolitans. Cosmopolitan. You, you can be cosmopolitan, but you don't have to forget about where you are from. That's really being rooted cosmopolitan. Being cosmopolitan means that you, you, are, you are so fluid, you are good at intermixing with different cultures, but at the same time, you don't have to forget about who you are. So it's, so I think this is a nice blend of everything in Central Asia. Okay, okay, interesting. Yes, I would have imagined. So uh, this urge of uh, modernity and uh, the, the sense of belonging to tradition, you know, is a cross. Uh, yeah. Particularly uh, that you know, in developing countries, in Muslim uh, majority countries, and everywhere, this is uh, there. Uh, yeah. Not just in Muslim societies, but other societies as well. And I absolutely agree with you, Doshan. You make an important uh, comment. I think the struggle is, uh, you know, uh, being diverse <laughs> in ways of thinking, but at the same time, see a sense of unity. Uh, with uh, a number of factors uh, yeah. from where you emerge as a human being. Uh, the, the, these tensions, uh, this tension between these two, many people have used it very constructive. Yeah. You and I are good example, let us say. <laughs> <laughs> we studied in different countries, including Canada, but nowhere I felt contradiction. Let me say this. No. Frustration no. that this is not mine. Now, personally, uh, Dushan, I look at these things from human perspective. If you look at it as a Kirghiz, as a Pakistani, as a Tajiki, you know, you might have a different perception. But uh, moving away from all this, if we were to look at this as human civilizations, you know, human religions, human cultures, human science, yeah. human religions, Believe me, then there is no issue. Everything is yours. Everything yeah. is mine. You know, this is human contribution. You know, Central Asia contributed uh, at times and many other places contributed at times. And today, many Western civilizations are contributing uh, to human well-being in many ways. So if we look at it this way, uh, we don't see any confrontation with civilizations or clash of civilizations, as one calls, you know. Uh, so I think uh, you, you're making an important, but coming down to education, uh, if I were uh, to not to ask you about education, it will be unfair with you being a thinker of education and a professor of education, that's important. What is the core, core value or core orientation in education? Uh, Dushan in Kyrgyz, or if you would like to comment on Kyrgyz education, 
as well as you know Kazakhstan and Central Asia or in Asia overall, including Tajikistan. Would you like to make a couple of comments, particularly yes, after uh, the 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 freedom, uh, as you call it, from uh, you know nineties uh, onwards? And uh, can you imagine today is the thirty first of August, and uh, it is the Independence Day of Kyrgyzstan. Oh. 30, 30 <laughs> years ago, strange. we gained independence. Exactly, it's just coincidence. <laughs> it's a it's a big holiday, big day for me. Interesting. Well, well education wise, I think there were a lot of attempts to improve both in Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan, overall in Central Asia. Uh, but sometimes these attempts were successful, but at times they were not successful. The attempts are being done is really to 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 provide such type of education which will be of the highest quality comparable with international standards, and hopefully with an European benchmarks because Kazakhstan is a, has signed the, the Bologna principles. Uh, and also, also, I think providing education which is equitable and fair to all layers of population because on paper, Soviet Union was uh, an egalitarian country. After the Soviet Union broke up, what was a time when like a liberal, market, uh, this uh, capitalism came to Central Asia, which means that, well, survival of the fittest. But I think right. initially it was really kind of a, if you are rich enough, you, if you are wealthy, you can provide better education to your kids. But eventually, I think there's more and more realization that this will lead to, unfortunately, to segregation and they will be increase, enhance, increasing the gaps between different layers of the population. Therefore, equity is a, is a big on, on uh, across Central Asia now. I think even rural kids should be getting good education. Uh, okay. Yep, these are a few ideas about education. Yep. Excellent. When I visited Tajikistan, uh, Dushan, I remember, uh, you know, um, I found marvelous schools, man. Having come from Pakistan, I could, uh, you know, <laughs> see uh, the state of our schools, and you have seen, you have visited, and we have together seen many schools. But in Tajikistan, schools, almost all schools centrally heated, air conditioned, you know, the kind of facilities they have had. But poor people, it was uh, probably uh, late 90s uh, when I visited. So at that time, they were grappling with this issue of managing to yeah. upkeep the schools, you know, with the standards that were already there before 90s, early 90s. Uh, they were struggling. I'm not sure at what stage they are today. Um, are you struggling with these kinds of issues also of maintaining school, maintaining the infrastructure and what have you? Yes, I think Soviet Union broke up and it's history and we need to rebuild and uh, to, to really develop uh, from sometimes for even from scratch. So because a lot of kindergartens were just privatized and the, the buildings of the uh, preschool uh, institutions were were given to people who were uh, using their personal use. They were sold, and uh, the and management has been big issue. But also one of the key issues I th I think is the lack of uh, very sound leadership in education. Leadership based on uh, on empirical research based like a decisions on education has to be have to be made on based on a very good research. But unfortunately. Uh, Sometimes there is a dependency on the external uh, expertise to solve the problems of Central Asia, which I don't think is a sustainable, which I don't think is a, it, it will be good for in the longer run. Therefore, there is a great need to develop capacity of the local policymakers, local um, I don't know, officials, education officials, so that they can really play a key role in not only managing, but leading the institutions so that it's in a is in a, in a transformative way, they can lead to the better, better situation. Otherwise, I think nowadays there is a lot of, the, there are many good ideas, but unfortunately they are tested outside of Central Asia and they are brought to Central Asia. Okay, interesting. Um, wondering uh, the university you are serving, uh, Dushan, first of all, give us a sense of the name Nazarbayev, I don't know how you spell it, I have difficulty. Uh, I can pronounce Arabic and Persian name, but this is uh, more uh, Russianized probably. 
the university. Can you tell us uh, one or two things about the university that you are serving? Yep, uh, with pleasure. I work at Nazarbayev University. Nazarbayev, uh, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev was the first president of Kazakhstan since independence. Uh, so uh, he is the first present president and the, he has a special status even now. Uh, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, uh, 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 the, this university is, uh, uh, is, uh, is after his name. All, uh, the, the, the university is, a, uh, is not a private university. It is fully funded from the, from the government of Kazakhstan. But okay. it, it has a status of being autonomous. So it, all the decisions are made, uh, uh, so especially by the university, because they want, they want really to set an example of the exemplary institution, higher education institution in Kazakhstan, which can then serve as an example for other institutions. So okay. therefore, this university has a mission of uh, to, mission to translate its best exp experiences to other universities in a way. So that's one of the missions. Uh, and I work at Graduate School of Education where we have a, a master program and a PhD program focusing on leadership. So in a way, the, the discussion that I was earlier uh, uh, alluding is really, we are trying to prepare uh, change agents or people who are, who, can, who are very versed in terms of the latest ideas, knowledge, or in terms of educational reform. So they can really play active role, positioning themselves as future leaders of education. Lovely, uh, Dushan. Um, I think it's open in, uh, to international students, isn't it? It is open and uh, this university is relatively new. It is new. It's only 10, maximum 10 or 11 years uh, since it was established. And the university is actively trying to bring the students, international students. And uh, we, this year we have one Pakistani student uh, in our doctoral program from northern areas of Pakistan, actually. <laughs> His name is Noor, and he's a graduate, uh, graduate of master's program from Aga Khan University. Uh, why university is very interested? Because according to Bologna principal criteria, uh, so it is checked in the, in the accreditation, university needs to have minimum of 10% of its students' body from abroad. So university uh -huh. uh, is trying actively to bring them. And uh, of course, there are different scholarships for international students. Of course, students, uh, if there is a uh, funder who can support the student from outside, I think you, they, they are welcome. But university also, if the student is exceptionally gifted student and they takes all the examinations uh, at a very high level, then they can be provided with a scholarship from the university, its, its own internal uh, resources. Excellent, Dushan. Thank you, Ahmed. This information is very useful for uh, potential students, you know, across the globe. Uh, maybe uh, uh, for this first interview, the final question that I would like to ask you is your personal pedagogy, your personal, uh, what we call uh, creed of teaching. What is your personal core teaching philosophy that you use on a daily basis? Uh, and you think you, why you have become such a great uh, professor. Uh, <laughs> you know, if you would like to comment on your personal way of looking uh, at the students, at education uh, and the meaning of life. Uh, well, uh, let, me, let me share my views about my teaching philosophy. I think, uh, well, I don't think I am that... Uh, uh, special, that different from many other professors. I think we have so many excellent professors at Nazarbayev University, uh, but nevertheless, I have won uh, three awards, teaching awards uh, uh, at, uh, as, as the best professor. But I think this is, I consider because I was fortunate to have met great educators in my life. For example, Kazim Bakis, uh, he, he is, all, he, he is this, he's a remarkable educator. Unfortunately, he died, but he was a truly inspira inspirational educator. Other the director of ID, right? First director of ID, founding yeah, director University. of ID, Kazim Bakis from Guyana, then he came from Alberta, Canada. Then, of course, in Canada at Toronto, I have met 
I, I got I, knowledge from great professors, as you also know, Dennis Deason, Stephen Anderson, Kenneth Leithwood, uh, Joe Farrell, uh, Mary B Beatty, many other professors. Uh, Andy Hargreaves was also my teacher there. Michael Fulan didn't teach me, but Michael Fulan, we were able to see him quite often in the elevator or coffee places. So these yeah, were no. professors. Uh, from each of them, I took something valuable, but also some a lot of professors who taught me in Kyrgyzstan when I was doing my undergraduate degree or at school. From each of them, I learned something. But I think what what is what is what kind of philosophy principles I really greatly value in teaching is that being really compassionate and caring for each student, and also helping students to realize their own potential, uh, valuing what they bring rather than trying to really impose my own ideas and uh, throw my knowledge at them. I, I, I try to see what kind of um, knowledge and experiences they bring to the classroom so that I think uh, and each each of our students, they especially if it's a diverse body of the students, each of them brings so much cultural, uh, educational life experiences, and it will be a great miss out if we don't capitalize on them. I think this uh, that's what I try, and also try I try to give opportunities for the students to take ownership for the classes for the for the courses because I tell to I tell them that. This is your course. Let me tell me how I can we can make it better so that you can learn maximum. These are a few ideas about my teaching. I don't know. Excellent, Dushan. Um, uh, very important ideas. Uh, my submission is that uh, you touched on a very important uh, nerve. Um, I personally become very sensitive about uh, these issues. My problem with the modern education, uh, as we have been discussing, as you know, is, is seeing knowledge not something to be given, not yeah. a product to be handed over, but rather knowledge acquisition. I don't like even acquisition also, because knowledge is always in the process of production. Yeah. So uh, giving a sense of appreciation how a knowledge is constructed by each person, each individual, no matter how stupid one is, no <laughs> matter how hobbledy high one is, everybody constructs his or has her own knowledge. It's subjective. It's a very strong subjective process. So I think good professors like you yourself, the way I have felt everywhere, uh, I studied around uh, eight universities, you know, the professors who encourage this self-construction of knowledge, as you rightly pointed out, is a huge issue. Um, uh, you know, some of the very fine professors always encourage this subjective, the personal process of knowledge construction and make people very creative in their own ways. Thank you very much, Dushan. This is just a brilliant way of looking at education. We'll continue to talk, but if you want to say anything final, we, our time is up almost. But I welcome if you want to say something that I haven't asked about. No, no, Zabardas, 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 my dear friends. Now we have an interview in Urdu. Me, bad kar kar sakte hai. Please. Bhot pyara, bad bad hua ap apke saath. Doctor Saab, bhot shukriya. Ap bhot bekterin admi hai. Mera bhot soch hai. Hamisha me soch karta hu. Ham hamare bekterin time. Canada may be better in time, wa am am dono ke bhot bhot acha sohbat aur onata. Yeah, is is baare ke me mera me I was when I was in Pakistan, I really uh, enjoyed meeting great people, great friends. But also, I was able to immerse into uh, Pakistani culture a little bit and I learned few verses. And maybe I would like to propose this to you if you like you can you can sing it with me uh, especially today is an independence day of kyrgyzstan i will be uh, but uh, this song is about pakistan let's see how it goes thank you very much thank you very much yeah okay. go ahead ye jazba junoon to himmat nahar 
Jazba junun to him matnahar. Just ju ju jo karevo juve asma. Mehnat apni hogi. Pechjan kabina bulo. Sapki nazurome. Pakistan, Kabina Bulo, Pakistan, Yetumara, Pakistan, Yehamara, Kyrgyzstan, Yetumara, Kyrgyzstan, Yehamara. Kyrgyzstan, Zindabad, Aj uh, lots of congratulations uh, and compliments. Uh, Dushan, uh, is, as I said, this is the end of nothing but the beginning of uh, hopefully so many things, uh, Dushan. I'm amazed that you don't speak Urdu, not only in the language, but in the language. No, no, no. Urdu is not a Dr. Saab, Urdu is not a problem. It's a deal. Habib cooking oil. <laughs> Dil Dil Pakistan. <laughs> dil Dil Pakistan. <laughs> By the way, Yemen Pakistan Kabi Jona freedom come on the way, you know, interesting in a 14th August, you know. Uh, Pakistan is uh, very special in terms of uh, particularly the national songs, you know, very inspiring songs, uh, philosophical songs, I must say. Those poets who have composed them is just superb, excellent. <clears throat> to Dushan, uh, yeah, human connectivity ka ek privilege hai when we actually think of each other as interdependence, integrated with each other, you know, sky is the limit. Jab hum language, borders, wagara ke buniyat par apna apko divide karte hai. So we are totally different people. But when we look at each other from this human perspective, as I said, we are indeed one, we have been one, we will be one. Uh, so great pleasure, Dushan, uh, uh, talking to you from such a long distance, me sitting in the uh, in Houston and you sitting in Astana in Central Asia and still talking like being together is a great privilege. Uh, thank you very much. You have been so generous to share your ideas from the depth of your heart, as I can see from your expressions, Dushan. It has been great pleasure. And I'm sure our audience, <clears throat> wherever they are listening, they will be listening to this video, uh, will thoroughly enjoy your talk and take home certain key messages from this talk. Nazarene Akram, bahut bahut shukriya aapka. Aapne ye video, is video ko suna. Aap dekh lein ki dunia ka andar different thinkers, different jagun par kaise sochte hain. और इनके सोच से हम कैसे फायदा उठा सकते हैं आइए हम मिलकर डॉक्टर दुशान का शुक्रिया अदा करें कि उन्होंने आज हमें इतना टाइम दिया अपने यूनिवर्सिटी टाइम से बचाकर और हमारे साथ अपने जरूरी ख्यालात शेयर किया इंतजार फरमाइए और भी बहुत थिंकर्स आगे आएंगे अपने ख्यालात का इजहार करेंगे थैंक यू वेरी मच आप सबका Bahad bahad shukriya Dushan. Thank you very much once again for sparing time up to your busy schedule and sharing your wonderful ideas. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.